Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question three from the Jan 2015 PUA paper two. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm gonna put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those questions out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. Okay, so it says that Ava Tellisford provided the following list of balances for her assets, liabilities, and capital on the 30th of April, 2014. So we have motor vehicles, all right, cash in hand. Then we have accounts receivable or debtors. It says loans below that, so that's a liability. Land and building is an asset. The provision for bad debts is a contra asset. Then we have accumulated depreciation for motor vehicle and land and building, all right. Inventory at hand, 42,000. Accounts payable, 30,005. That's a liability, as is bank overdraft of 7,900. Then we have fixtures and fittings, 24,200. That's a non-current asset. So why doesn't that have any depreciation? Maybe we might see some in the additional information. Accrued expenses is a current liability. Prepaid rent is a current asset and capital is capital. Right, so the additional information, this is a very important section to check out. So let's take a read there as well. So included in the loan of 68,000 is an amount of 8,000, which is payable within a year. Oh, all right, let's pull this apart now. So the loan amount of 68,000, it says, includes an amount of 8,000 payable within a year. So it means that out of the 68,000, 8,000 is payable within a year. So that 8,000 is a current liability. The remaining 60 would be non-current. So you're going to have to split that 68,000 into two pieces, a current portion and a non-current portion. So just bear that in mind and always be sure to read your question to pick out that information. Next item says that depreciation on motor vehicle was omitted for the year. Whoop, what does omitted mean? It wasn't charged, it was left out. We're gonna have to fix that. Motor vehicle is depreciated at the rate of 20% per year using the straight line method. Okay, so for the straight line method, all we have to do is multiply that 20% by the cost of the motor vehicles. Easy peasy. Next, we have net income or profits for the year up to 30th April was 49,450. Ah, so if you're paying attention, the point just before said that we omitted depreciation. Depreciation, well, there's an expense component to it. And if we omit an expense, it means we didn't charge enough expenses in the income statement, which means expenses were too low, which makes profit too high. So that 49,450 will have to be adjusted downward when we find out the depreciation for the previous point. And the final amount here, final, not, not amount, final point here, says that Ava made drawings of $1,000 per month for the past year. So $1,000 per month for a year, a year has 12 months, 1,000 by 12 is 12,000, and an additional 800 in goods. Okay, so the total drawings will be the sum of all of those things. Okay, so let's start. We have to, by, by the way, what we have to do is, is do a statement of financial position, a balance sheet, as at 30th April 2014. So I'm going to bring that in across here on the right-hand side now. And please, don't forget to head up your statements. You get marks for that, at least a mark, right? And you want every mark you could get in that exam. So name of the entity, Ava Tellisford, the name of the statement, and the period to which it applies. Okay, so the first section. Now, by the way, they, the question was specific, and they wanted the order of permanence. Permanence means long lasting so you're going to start with your non-current assets and then go to your current assets now for those of you who've been watching more of these videos some of my earlier videos i used to do the working capital presentation of a balance sheet where after non-current assets and current assets i would subtract current liabilities from current assets to give net working capital so that was the format i used to use back when i was in form four five six and in university but of course there's no one right format and I have been told that CSEC has been moving away from that format to the order of permanence or liquidity. So I have done this balance sheet in order of permanence with assets on top and capital and liabilities below. So if you want to see an alternative format, you can always do it up and send it to me on Instagram at Adaptuation and I'll have a look. Okay, so let's start off with our non-current assets. And we're going to put some dollar signs. So don't forget your headings, cost, depreciation, network value. Now I'm abbreviating to save on some space. Right in your exam, please don't abbreviate. You can put accumulated depreciation or provision for depreciation for that column. So we have a few non-current assets. We have motor vehicles, we have land and building, and we have these fixtures and fittings down here. We also have some information regarding depreciation for those assets. And we were told that for the motor vehicle in this bullet point down here, they omitted the depreciation, which is 20% per year on the straight line method. 
So what we need to do is find 20% of 80,000, which by the way is 16,000, and then we need to add it to the existing accumulated depreciation. So 16 plus 22 or 22 plus 16 will give us 38,000. So in order of permanence, I think that land and buildings is the most permanent asset. So we're going to put the 200,000 minus the 54. Then I'm going to put the fixtures and fittings, 24,000 too. Now I'm a bit curious as to why there was no depreciation on that item, but that's what the question gave. And then the motor vehicles will have the 80 minus the 38, which gives us the 42,000 as a net book value. Then we're going to total all three columns, giving us our total cost for totals for cost, depreciation, and net book value. Next, let's get our current assets going. So current assets, we're going to have inventory or stock. Then we're going to have the accounts receivable. Oops, sorry, or debtors. Let's just highlight that one item, right? And don't forget, you have a provision for bad debts, which could also be called a provision for doubtful debts or an allowance for doubtful debts. So we're going to subtract that figure, 2,500, from the 25,000. We also have prepaid rent, which is a current asset, and cash in hand. So let's see how this looks. So inventory, right? Accounts receivable minus the provision for bad debts, leaving us with net receivables, prepaid rent and cash of 6,100, giving us a subtotal of 74,600. Now I'm seeing something happening there for um, <laughs> the total assets, right? So I, I think I, I messed up my formatting. So, right. so 286,800 is the total of these two items here, okay? So that's your total assets, non-current assets plus current assets. So next we have to do is of course finance by capital and liabilities. So your capital is more permanent than your liabilities. So just bear that in mind if you are doing order of permanence. So your capital will come first 156,800. Now that's your opening balance. So your net profit is usually added to that. And don't forget the net profit was 49,450 before the adjustment for the depreciation of the 16,000. So we're going to have to subtract that, right? And you're seeing that here, 49,450 minus 16,000 giving us 33,450. Subtotal is 19250. And don't forget the drawings that we were told of in the very last bullet point down here. So again, 1,000 per month for a year means 12,000. 1,000 by 12 months in a year. Add an additional 800. So that's going to be 12,800, leaving us with 177,450 in terms of capital at end. Now, liabilities. So we're going to start off with the non-current liability, which is the loan. Now, remember, the loan is 68, but included in the 68 is an amount of 8, which is payable within a year. So we know that not the entire 68 is not non-current. Out of the 68, 8,000 is current because that portion of 8,000 is payable within the year. So we're going to have to subtract that from the 68 to give us 60,000. Then we have current liabilities. Now, what do we have in terms of current liabilities? I have accounts payable and bank overdraft in addition to accrued expenses. I think it's just those three things. Let's see if I'm surprised by anything that pops up. Right? Oh, right. The first item. <laughs> so the thing I was just talking about, which is the current portion of the non-current liabilities. Right. So let me explain that. So I think you should be okay with these three items because they were in that list of balances. Right. So this item here, right, the amount payable of 8,000 within, well, uh, yeah, an amount of 8,000 payable within one year. So that was part of the initial amount you borrowed. And I suppose part of the loan agreement had you paying back 8,000 a year or whatever it was. So this amount comes due within the next year. So that amount is a current amount. All right. Okay. So that's going to give us a, a subtotal of 49,350 for current assets, giving us a total of 109,350 for total liabilities. And when we add those two things together, as in add the liabilities and capital, we're going to get 286,800 with ties back, which ties back, sorry, with total assets above. Okay guys, so there you have it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Check out some more videos up here. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you know every time I drop a new video. Check out my website for some free payaway handouts and there's a link in the description below to my Facebook page for free solutions in POA Math and Admas. Again guys, thanks so very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.